सुप्रभात सभी को नमस्ते विद ग्रेटिट्यूड टू द संगा आई बिगिन टूडेज प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन दबेंडनिंग ऑफ द हिंड्रेंसेस let's go over the structure of uh, today's presentation we'll begin by outlining the five hindrances that is the factors that slow us down distract us or obstruct us on our progress to the path uh, following that we will study the sutta and uh, gain insight uh, through five uh, powerful striking similes Uh, which uh, offer vivid comparison to help us uh, better understand the nature of these hindrances uh, then we will explore uh, the steps to overcome the hindrances as uh, outlined in dhasa's book meditation manual lastly we will wrap up with the fruits of abandoning that is a uh, uh, fruit of abandoning of the hindrances and the freedom that arises from the abandonment so in the introduction to the sutta uh, bhikkhu bodhi says that uh, the primary task in the initial phase of intensive meditation is the abandoning of the five hindrances and uh, this is uh, uh called by lord buddha as uh, the five five uh, defilements of mind uh, which obstruct concentration and weaken our wisdom and uh, if we are not uh, aware of them they can easily dominate and control us so let's uh, list the five uh, hindrances uh the first one is sensual desire uh now something we are all uh, familiar with uh, it involves uh, the craving for uh, sensory pleasures or uh, indulgence uh, uh let's think of uh, all those extra scoops of uh, chocolate ice cream that tempt us and uh, we keep uh, eating it sometimes uh, mindfully uh sensual desire promise uh, satisfaction and uh, they do but only for a very short time uh, we all know their limits next is ill will which uh, manifests as hatred or uh, anger uh, sometimes uh, uh, we may have experience that we uh, feel uh, aversion towards someone without any reason so even when they haven't said or done anything uh uh we we still have a ill will towards uh, them uh, now these two sensual desires and ill will uh, are uh, like a pair uh, one pulls us towards craving uh, while the other one pushes us towards aversion sloth and torpor uh, comes next and uh, this creates a heavy sleepy mind where uh, energy drains and drowsiness sets in then comes restlessness and remorse restlessness is a state of worry or uh, boredom or agitation that makes it difficult to remain still or calm and remorse is uh, a feeling of uh, sadness or regret arising from having uh, uh something uh, done something wrong and these two sloth uh, and less restless and remorse they are also kind of a pair and uh, finally there is a doubt uh which is the trickiest uh, of all uh it uh, circles us around uh, like a dog uh, chasing its tail and we are unable to find any clarity or direction let's uh, study the sutta now and out with this noble aggregate of moral discipline this noble restraint over the sense faculties this noble mindfulness and clear comprehension 
and this noble contentment. Uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi explains that uh, these four qualities are the requisites, uh, uh, essential requisites for one living in a forest. Uh, and we have covered uh, these requisites in past four sessions. Uh, and for one who lacks uh, these four requisite, uh, does not succeed in forest life. He resorts to a secluded dwelling, a forest, the foot of a tree, a mountain, a glen, a hillside cave, a cremation ground, a jungle grove, the open air, a heap of straw. After returning from his arms round, following his meals, he sits down, crosses his legs, holds his body erect and sets up mindfulness before him. Uh, the word secluded uh, uh, means uh, even if a uh, dwelling is uh, nearby, uh, it should not be crowded with householders and monks, then it is uh, secluded. And uh, the expression sets up uh, mindfulness before him. Uh, this means that uh, he applies uh, mindfulness towards his meditation subject. That is uh, either at the tip of the nose or uh, in the middle region of uh, uh, the upper lip uh, where the air strikes when it comes out of the nose. Having abandoned covetousness for the world, he dwells with a mind free from covetousness. He purifies his mind from covetousness. Uh, having abandoned covetousness, uh, the meaning here is that uh, he, uh, the bhikkhu has abandoned lust for the five aggregates of clinging. And uh, a mind free from covetousness means that it has been abandoned by way of suppression. Uh, purification of the mind from covetousness uh, means that the bhikkhu acts in such a way that uh, he lets go he lets go of uh, covetousness and doesn't grasp it at it again. And purification of the mind uh, uh, means that uh, acting in such a way that it is uh, presently released and uh, in the future is not uh, uh, taken up again. Uh, now, uh, the, strikely, uh, the striking simile given here is uh, that of uh, a man who has uh, taken a loan and uh, in the commentarial section, Bhikkhu, Bedi, Bhikkhu Bodhi explains that a person uh, who borrows money and uh, wastes it uh, and unable to repay it uh, cannot justify himself uh, when his creditors demand uh, repayment. Uh, they can uh, speak to him harshly, restrain him or uh, even harm him and he must uh, endure it all. Because the reason is that uh, non-payment of his uh, debt. Uh, in the same way, someone who is uh, driven by sensual desires uh, towards another and fixates uh, on them with craving, uh, they must uh, also bear it that if a person speaks to them harshly, restrains or harms them, uh, it is their sensual desire that caused them to endure it. That's why uh, sensual desires have been uh, equated to a person uh, taking a loan and unable to repay it. But uh, if uh, the person succeeds in uh, repayment of uh, paying his uh, loans, uh, as a result, uh, uh, he would become glad and experience joy. Uh, and, and, and this is how the simile explains uh, the similarity between uh, amendment of covetousness and a repayment of uh, loans, something uh, we, we all would have experienced when we have finished our uh, EMIs. <clears throat> now the second hindrance, uh, having abandoned ill will and hatred, he dwells with a benevolent mind, sympathetic, 
for the welfare of all living beings. He purifies his mind from ill will and hatred. Uh, both these words, ill will and uh, hatred, are designations for anger. And uh, the striking simile here is uh, that of a sick person. Uh, in the commentarial section, Bhikkhu Bodhi again explains uh, that uh, if a person is suffering, let's say, from a bile disease uh, and uh, he cannot uh, enjoy the taste of sweet things like uh, honey and sugar, uh, due to the, the disease. Uh, in fact, he, they find them bitter and spit them out. Uh, similarly, if we are uh, harboring uh, ill will, uh, uh, that person will not accept even uh, gentle guidance from a kind teacher. Uh, they may reject it, claiming that they are being uh, overly oppressed and leave, either wandering aimlessly or returning to uh, lay life. So just as a person who is suffering from a disease cannot appreciate the taste of uh, honey and sugar, uh, a person uh, with ill will uh, cannot, uh, a person who is consumed by anger cannot experience the joy of Buddha's teaching uh, such as uh, the uh, four jhanas. Therefore, uh, uh, ill will should be seen as uh, an illness. And this, uh, I think, is a very powerful representation. Uh, you know, next time uh, we get angry, uh, it would be uh, good to equate uh, this with uh, the sickness, uh, uh, you know, that a person undergoes. So, so suppose uh, a man becomes sick and he recovers from the illness, then he becomes glad and experiences joy. Uh, so the same joy is uh, experienced by the bhikkhu who has abandoned ill will and hatred. Uh, the third hindrance, having abandoned dullness and drowsiness, he dwells receiving light, mindful and clearly comprehending. He purifies his mind from dullness and drowsiness. Uh, and the simile given here is that of a person locked uh, in prison. Uh, the simile further explains that, uh, that uh, on a festival day, uh, if a man is imprisoned, he would not be able to witness any part of the celebration. And uh, if he is uh, freed uh, the next day and he hear others exclaim, that this was such a wonderful uh, festival yesterday, such dance, such songs. Uh, he cannot respond because he did not experience it himself. Uh, in the same way, uh, if a bhikkhu is overcome by dullness and drowsiness during a dhamma teaching uh, presented through various methods, he will not be able to grasp its uh, beginning, uh, middle or end. And... Uh, after the teaching, if he hears others praising it, uh, what a marvelous dhamma talk, such arguments, such similes, uh, he will not be able to respond as he was too uh, drowsy to benefit from it. Therefore, uh, dullness and drowsiness should be seen as a form of slave, uh, as a form of a, per a person who is imprisoned. The fourth one, restlessness and worry, having Abandoned restlessness and worry, he dwells at ease within himself with a peaceful mind. He purifies his mind from restlessness and worry. And the simile given here is that of a slave. Uh, a slave, uh, even you know, when he's trying when he's trying to enjoy a festival, may be ordered uh, that there's an urgent task uh, for you and uh, go and uh, quickly get that done. Otherwise, uh, you will be punished. And fearing punishment, uh, he rushes away, misses the entire festival, its beginning, middle and end. Why? Because he is bound to the will of others. Similarly, if someone, if Bhikkhu is unskilled in the Vinay and goes into the forest for seclusion, uh, they may unintentionally commit a minority uh, disciplinary offense 
and uh, and uh, that forces them to abandon their seclusion and seek a vinay expert to restore the moral discipline uh, preventing them from enjoying the peace of seclusion uh, why because uh, they are plagued by restlessness and worry and therefore restlessness and uh, worry should be seen as a form of slavery uh, and and once a bhikkhu is released from slavery and uh, gain his independence uh, by way of the simile he would become glad and uh, experience joy having abandoned doubt he dwells as one who has passed beyond doubt unperplexed about wholesome states he purifies his mind from doubt uh again a very powerful simile of a man uh, with wealth and possessions uh, traveling uh, along a desert uh, road uh a man who is traveling along a deserted road would be fearful of thieves and uh, become anxious at uh, every small sound uh, thinking that thieves are near and uh, his fear causes him to move uh, uh, to frequently stop and turn back uh, moving forward with uh, great hesitation and as a result he struggles to reach safety and uh, in fact may never get there similarly when someone is plagued by doubt uh, questioning uh, whether the teacher is truly enlightened uh, they waver in their belief unable to resolve their uncertainty and uh, this doubt prevents them from progressing on the path to enlightenment so just as doubt uh, hinders the travelers from reaching safety uh, it uh, creates a obstacle for striving uh, one towards spiritual uh, progress and therefore uh, the doubt should be Uh, treated like a treacherous desert road uh, but once uh, uh, a person crosses uh, this road and arrives uh, safely at a village uh, he'll experience uh, gladness and joy in the same way great king when a bhikkhu sees that these five hindrances are unabandoned within himself he regards that as a debt as a sickness as confinement in prison as slavery as a desert road so unless and until these five hindrances are abandoned uh, we should regard them as uh, uh, either trapped in debt or sickness or uh, you know in being prison uh, that would uh, that that are the corresponding similes used to uh, describe the five hindrances but when he sees that these five hindrances have been abandoned within himself he regards that as freedom from debt as good health as release from prison as freedom from slavery and as a place of safety when he sees that these five hindrances have been abandoned within himself gladness arises when he is gladdened rapture arises when his mind is filled with rapture his body becomes tranquil tranquil in body he experiences happiness being happy his mind becomes concentrated so this uh, sut uh, as such uh, uh, doesn't uh, go uh, into the details of uh, the abandoning of uh, the five hindrances uh, so uh, what i have done is uh, uh, in sir's book meditation manual there is a recommendation of how to go about uh, the abandonment of uh, five hindrances in a very precise and uh, methodical manner Uh, much like a physician's approach uh, so let's take a closer look at uh, uh, how uh, we as lay practitioners uh, uh, can do it
so there are some general factors uh, and uh, mindfulness or sati is uh, very essential uh, that is one of the four requisites uh, without uh, recognizing the presence of a hindrance uh, we can do little to prevent or remove it uh, and uh, if mindfulness is weak uh, we should uh, reflect on the harmful effects of the hindrance and this requires patience. Uh, the second is uh, we can engage uh, in meaningful conversations with uh, elders and good friends and uh, avoid idle or uh, frivolous talk. Uh, studying and uh, reflecting on discourses also help us gain clarity on the teachings especially in overcoming Restlessness, worry, and doubt. And this is uh, pretty much uh, we have been doing in Vasa 2024. Uh, so, as I said, in a uh, much like a physician style, uh, Sir has uh, described the cause, cure, and prevention of uh, uh, these uh, five hindrances. Uh, let's take up uh, one by one. Uh, the cause uh, for sensual desire. Sensual desires uh, arise uh, from constant thinking and uh, the mistaken belief that uh, they will bring lasting happiness. And, uh, and, and we get uh, carried away by external beauty, especially that of uh, human body. And the cure here is to practice uh, Ashub Bhavna that is meditation on the unattractive and uh, contemplation on the non-beautiful nature of the body. Prevention, uh, for prevention, uh, we need to exercise sensory restraint, uh, moderation in food and uh, on the uh, non-beautiful, uh, uh, moderation in food and the insight of uh, impermanence, that is anicca. Uh, ill will or uh, hatred happens when there is a constant complaining and uh, we focus on the irritating or uh, repulsive aspects uh, of a person or situation and uh, take uh, negative experiences like uh, criticism, loss, blame or failure, failure as personally. Uh, the cure uh, is to ignore uh, negative qualities and focus on the positive aspects of the person or situation causing the irritation. And uh, prevention for prevention, the five antidotes have been prescribed. Uh, that is practice, uh, develop uh, metta, life, loving kindness, karuna, compassion, upekha, uh, equanimity, and uh, in attention to negativity. Uh, reflecting uh, on the principle of uh, Kamma uh, uh, would be also very helpful. The third one, a sloth and torpor, uh, discontentment, boredom, laziness, drowsiness, often due to overeating or a depressed state of mind. Uh, uh, what we can do is to change uh, the meditation subject and uh, recite a passage. Uh, and uh, the prevention for prevention, uh, it is recommended to reduce uh, food intake and practice walking meditation. Restlessness and worry, uh, excessive uh, energetic striving, focus on achievement, guilt, remorse, and unwise attention to difficult situation. Now here the cure is to adopt a relaxed attitude, uh, practice uh, anapana meditation to calm the mind, and uh, reflects, uh, reflect on the merits earned by observing uh, the ethical conduct that is shield. Prevention would be to maintain ethical conduct, gain clarity about uh, teaching and uh, avoid prolonged uh, discussion and engage, engage in wise reflection. 
doubt uh, if there's a lack of clarity regarding the teachings and uh, distinctions uh, between the wholesome action and unwholesome action uh, we can gain uh, good knowledge of the discourses and uh, clarify doubts uh, through investigation and questioning uh, and uh, and we need to uh, develop a strong commitment to practice to overcome the doubt so this brings us brings us uh, to the conclusion of our uh, presentation for today uh, the fruits of uh, abandoning the five hindrances as uh, mentioned uh, in the sutta earlier uh, it is uh, a person experiences uh, happiness uh, and joy and when he is gladdened rapture arises when his mind is full of rapture his body becomes tranquil tranquil in body he experiences happiness being happy his mind becomes concentrated bhikkhu bodhi uh, summarizes this uh, with a note that uh, the deepened uh, concentration that comes from removing the hindrances uh, uh, leads to all these uh, leads to the tranquil body and uh, concentrated mind and uh, this leads to the attainment of the first jhana which is uh, concerned, considered one of the initial higher fruits of uh, recluse as uh, each uh, jhana is mastered and surpassed it uh, results in the attainment of higher jhanas each uh, more refined than the previous ones uh, and the jhanas are encouraged by lord buddha as uh, and they offer a taste of uh, nibbana's bliss and serve uh, as a powerful foundation for developing calm concentration which supports the arising of wisdom so gita ji will enlighten us uh, uh, about four jhanas uh, in the next session and uh, i think i'll stop at that for uh, today's presentation Uh, if there are any comments uh, observation or uh, any questions uh, we are happy to discuss it thank you so as sunil ji says prashn agar puchne hain aapko to abhi puch sakte hain वो टेबल फिर से डिस्प्ले करेंगे आप जो आपने धर्सा भी किताब से लिया है जी बंते जी द नेक्स्ट फोर ऑनवर्ड्स या थैंक्स द नेक्स्ट वन the next uh, yeah yeah sunil ji my question on the restlessness and reflecting on the shila or ethical conduct how this is interlinked actually so it uh, uh, 
what it says is that uh, it reflect on merits earned by observing Sheel. You know, uh, if uh, when we observe when we observe Sheel, uh, we 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 earn uh, merits, and and uh, if we reflect on it, uh, uh, we will not uh, be you know, uh, restless or worry. Maybe sir can uh, elaborate further on this uh, to the precise yeah. question that you have raised. So I think the assumption is that the worry is on account of breaking of shield. I think that's how it is. Yes, uh, yes, that's right. Because uh, even in the simile, uh, what we had seen is uh, Bhikkhu Bodhi had explained that someone uh, who has, uh, uh, you know, not followed Vinay and uh, and he is uh, in a forest uh, meditating uh, when he he uh, re reflects on it uh, he becomes uh, restless and worry uh, so so at that point of time if uh, someone reflects on uh, all the merits that have been observed whenever seal was uh, observed so yeah i think uh, it's that way I am basically talking in terms of uh, the anxiety created or um, the few restlessness about the future or losing something that creates restlessness and worry. Would observing Sheila or focusing Sheila would be helpful in that kind of situation. I think uh, uh, from personal experience, uh, what I think is that uh, Anapan is uh, very useful to calm the mind when one, one is uh, uh, worried or uh, restlessness. And Anapan is also, uh, you know, stated here. Uh, and and as Bhanteji said that uh, uh, this applies when uh, Vine has been uh, broken and uh, uh, and and uh, one you know uh, as a result becomes restless and worry. Especially uh, it's talking about a bhikkhu who is in seclusion. So uh, for the first, uh, if there is. Uh, and when the reason for which uh, you have stated uh, restlessness and worry, I I, I think uh, anapan uh, would be a better practice to to for the cure purposes. Actually, Prakash ji, these are technical words, you know. You are interpreting it in the you know, dictionary common common usage sense, uh -huh. but these are technical translations of uh, udbhucha and kukucha, and so they're translated like this, and they are linked uh, specifically to especially the issue around uh, worry is linked to uh, past that's how it's described so any difficult misdeeds in the past misbehavior in the past etc is considered to be the cause of what is translated as worry so it it, it doesn't refer to necessarily doesn't i mean you could extend it to that also mm. it doesn't necessarily refer to you know our uh, normal day-to-day -day things but if we also apply if we think a little creatively we can see that even on in the normal uh, life circumstances uh, it's pretty pretty similar and you can see some of the preventive measures see for example the uh, recollection of um, uh, he mentioned anicca somewhere and then he also mentioned karma somewhere so we can see if we think about but those things then they help us address issues like you know why is this happening with me you know what's wrong you know those are the sort of things that we classify under worry isn't it so we can if we think if we look at it at least how i see how i experience it if i look at it through the lens of both um, uh, especially karma that's really a very big 
antidote yeah very powerful actually yeah yeah uh, mantija i was actually reflecting this way even the anxiety or uncertainty of the future as long as one is followed the right way of doing the things and not uh, not violating any kind of you no know, rules or regulation the way it's supposed to be done and there is no restless in that way it, it i'm connecting back on the shila part where as when we supposed to do the way supposed to do the things and we have done it and we should leave result whatever it comes for the future rather worrying about the future yeah. that's yeah, technically that, absolutely that's technically how it's described that restlessness has to do with you know speculations about the future yes. when this happen what will happen yeah this yes. and roughly that is what anxiety is isn't it yeah like uh, the second one uh, uh, you know ill will particularly uh, you know uh, i have uh, experienced after reading this i have experienced that uh, like it says ignore negative qualities pay attention to the positive qualities of whoever or whatever is causing irritation or develop a loving kindness now this this uh, has been very helpful to overcome the ill will uh, part so so i think we uh i should reflect uh, whenever we experiences uh, these phenomena uh, this actually could be a very helpful uh, way to overcome the all the hindrances that we usually face yeah um sanjeev here i think sati and the balanced mind is very much required to look at the positive thing of a person in the big that's right that's yeah. I think that's, that's why good. that's why it starts with mindfulness. Yeah. And and uh, study and reflection on discourses. Uh, I mean, just to uh, elaborate this further, or whatever we have gained during uh, past four months in Vasa twenty four. I mean, it has helped uh, extremely to you know uh, deepen our understanding of uh, dhamma and uh, and overcome. all the doubts uh, and the restless and worry the problem of translation always remains the exact translation of uh, onrachya kukucha would not be restlessness and worry it would be remorse kukucha means kokritya apne bure karmo ka याद करके परेशान होना एग्जैक्टली दैट इज द मीनिंग सो इट इज इन इंग्लिश इट विल बी रिमोर्स एंड फॉर दैट जनरली एडवाइस यू शुड गो टू योर कल्याण मित्र टॉक टू हिम एंड एक्सप्लेन हिम एंड रिलीव योर सेल्फ ऑफ द बर्डन ऑफ रिमोर्स बाय टेकिंग अ डिटर्मिनेशन कि मैं आगे से ऐसा नहीं करूंगा दैट इज द स्टैंडर्ड थिंग एस वेल एज वरिंग एंगजाइटी फियर एप्रीहेंशन they come under both uh, immune and aversion and under the you know the the word there is vyapada so vyapaja is basically a negative state of mind which is uh, immune basically but it has various links of aversion so whether you put worry here or there both of them have to be adopted near observation of shil i will not ensure freedom from worry no the and flight with the way the rest help is obtained by reflection on the law of karma if you are accepting if you develop a deep acceptance of law of karma you see whatever situation one is faced with as a manifestation of my past karma so there's a great help in acceptance of the situation biggest problem is non acceptance of the situation which causes restlessness is it and anxiety and all that if you have a deep uh, confidence in the law of karma we know whatever i may do i may do nothing apparently in this life i may do nothing which is breaking shila or anything of that kind and yet i may suffer enormously because this is the time for my past karma to come in so this the reflection on principle of karma understanding it deeply 
is of great help in overcoming, in coming to accept. I won't say overcoming, coming to accept. Once you accept an unpleasant situation, it doesn't trouble you in a in the same manner in which it would have otherwise troubled. So reflection on principle of karma is of great help. The other things are, for example, metta is when you have ill will towards somebody specifically. You know, it happens we get to upset with somebody and we start wishing him bad or we, you know, deeply in the heart, we say, iska bhi kuch nuksan ho, tada rab, isko tabhi pata chalega ki jab iski galbi, iski bhi kuch problem hai. So those, those kinds of uh, wrong mental states are handled by metta or if we are really developed in our practice, we may develop compassion towards somebody who is causing us harm because we know, again from principle of karma, that a person who is harming me is likely to suffer enormously because of his unwholesome karma. So that understanding of karma makes you feel compassionate towards people who are creating difficulties for you. Upekha, of course, is the ultimate solution. That is means acceptance, you know, in the relevant sense. And Buddha advises in Vitakka Santhana Sutta in attention, just forget about it. Devote your attention to something else. And rather than considering bad qualities of people, focus on that you have written, pay attention to positive qualities. No, usually the people with whom we develop ill will are those who are very close to us. No, sadly, that is the truth. And even if they may have done so many good to us, something sometimes because of certain circumstances, they do something which is hurtful to us. We forget about everything that they have done before. So remembering whatever good people have done to us is a great help in that sense. So they all go together, you know. The number two and number four should be seen in a totality together. Then the practice becomes easier. And this Punyana Sati is a very good way of just reflecting on merits, you know. Punyana Sati, in fact, in uh, the Anusati, Buddha mentions it in two parts, Shila Anusati and Chaga Anusati. He breaks it into two parts, reflecting on your purity of conduct and reflecting on your generosity. They give us, they uplift the mind from negative state. If you are depressed, if you are feeling uh, low, then that kind of a reflection is a very great help. So these various anusatis recommended by the Buddha are actually meant for temporarily uplifting our mind. You know, Buddha anusati, Dhamma anusati, Sangha anusati, Punya anusati, Chaga anusati, and so on. Marna anusati. Our last of them is Marna anusati is the, supposed to be the ultimate. So those anusatis help us in various ways. We have, we have so much of... Uh, Sutradhan available, you know, the, the wealth of learning which comes us to help at various stages of the uh, handling these uh, defilements or never others. Ji, <coughs> Deepak Ji, aap kuch puchna ka? I have two, three questions. Uh, just now, Darshab has said about metta. And of course, it is very desirable, no doubt about this. But uh, in this world, when we have to get uh, something done from others, uh, and uh, there's a clash of interest, and uh, we are being uh, too friendly, we have a lot of mitta for him. He takes us as for granted and ignores our uh, ignores our interests. That becomes a difficult situation. They are unreasonable. We are having a good gesture toward them. We are helpful, always helpful. But uh, where the question of interest, our legitimate interests are required are to be you no know, pursued. We are being, you no know, trampled by others. That's one observation. Secondly, about uh, this uh, laziness and boredom, 
I feel ki in our past life, whatever we have spent so many years, we are having a we have developed very strong tendency to seek players. And uh, now switching over to spiritualistic path, which of course is very, very desirable, uh, does cause uh, laziness and uh, boredom quite often. These are my two points, and uh, it's open for discussion. Hmm. I think the first one uh, that you mentioned uh, uh, is uh, generally uh, generally something which uh, we all face uh, in in our uh, daily life. Uh, people sometimes are unreasonable, and uh, uh, there are situations where conflict of interest uh, does arise. Uh, what I can think of uh, is that. Uh, uh, what Asin Goenkaji mentioned it uh, during uh, uh, the 10 day retreat is that uh, there would be situation where one would be required uh, to deal with other people firmly and uh, and 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 one should uh, they, uh, deal with the person another person firmly uh, between all the compassion in the heart uh, so so I think uh, this is something because uh, the first foremost thing to be kept in our, in our mind is our mental state. Uh, that uh, the actions being done by the other person, is it uh, uh, leading to a, a mental defilement uh, uh, in me? Uh, then even that is not a, a good uh, thing for, for our practice. So, so what he advises is to deal firmly in all, all those situations and uh, uh, but with a compassion in heart uh, uh, to correct the person now this must this might be very uh, difficult uh, to start with uh, but i think uh, this is uh, achievable and this is something we can reflect on and see and maybe you know even try uh, try a couple of times to see how it uh, works, how it goes. Maybe Sir or Bhante ji would like to add further to this or if uh, there's anything, uh, any other thing which has been uh, advised in Dhamma or... बिल्कुल ठीक है सुनिए आपने बहुत अच्छा कहा ये तो क्लासिक मिसअंडरस्टैंडिंग है ना जो कि कई बार डिस्कस भी हो चुकी है कि जी मैत्री का मतलब है बस ऐसे ही आप डोरमैट बन जाओ और इरेशनल प्यार मोहब्बत बांटते रहो दैट्स नॉट द मीनिंग व्हाट एवर इवन इफ यू डू समथिंग वेरी फर्मली यू डू दैट विदाउट योर हार्ट बींग योर ओन माइंड बींग ओवरकम बाय इल विल सो यू डो इट जैसे कि हमें सिखाया जाता है बार बार यू डो इट आउट ऑफ सती एंड पन्या ये इस स्थिति में ये इस व्यक्ति का काम है इसको करना है मेरा काम मेरा रोल इससे काम लेना है तो मैं लूंगा बट इट डजेंट इट द एजम्पन इज के केवल मेरे मन में अगर गुस्सा इलविल पैदा होगा तो ही मैं कुछ फॉर्म कर सकता हूँ है ना दैट इज अ मिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग आई थिंक दैटिशनिंग पास कंडीशनिंग या सुनील द पॉइंट इज हम जब तक अपने आप को ये सारे कॉप आउट देते रहेंगे ना ये पास में ऐसा होता है जी हम yeah. ऐसे हैं हम कभी नहीं टूटेंगे हमें yeah. आज एक बहुत इनवेल्यूएबल टीचिंग मिल रही है क्या मेरा मन इसको लेने के लिए तैयार है या मेरा मन वही इसी में घूम रहा है अपने लिए बहाने बना रहा है रोल ऑफ माइंडफुलनेस कैन आई माइंडफुल सी यार ये मेरा मन ये क्या बातें बनाता रहता है हमेशा ही जब भी कोई ऐसी बात आती है तो वो कोई ना कोई कॉप आउट ढूंढ लेता है सर आपका सेकेंड क्वेश्चन वॉज इट एन ऑब्जर्वेशन एक बारी अगर तो ये था कि हम लोग पहले इसी पॉइंट के ऊपर कहते हैं जो आप बनते जी कह रहे हैं बिल्कुल ठीक कह रहे हैं 
but sir unless uh, you drive a message give a message to others that you can be you know tough and sometimes maybe rough i will say things don't get done no yeah but so how is okay. how does that conflict sometimes, with having a heart you you remember the chanting of of what is the chanting of maitri and and karuna maitri is actually my practice and you know? may my heart not be defiled no that's okay but for a while for a while we have to keep maitri aside and drive a point to the other person that yeah i can be rough and tough and then afterward you again revert to metta this is what i personally feel as better. long as you see them in that dichotomous way you we are not in business at all you are assuming that uh, to be rough and tough requires a heart of ill will that's not the case roughness and toughness and whatever else can come out of the merit of the stiti is stiti mein toughness avashyak hai main tough isliye nahi ho raha hu kyunki mujhe gussa aa raha hai agar mujhe gussa aa raha hai to to already mai i have lost the, i have no uh, meri panya to gayi na agar mere jaise abhi inhone samjhaya mere samne agar mushkil stiti hai to wo mere hi karmo ka natija hai i can deal with it sure but i don't have to deal with it with anger and annoyance i deal with it with this understanding acha mere karmo ke wajah se ye mushkil stiti mushkil vyakti mere jeevan mein aaya hai ab main kya karu acha isse mujhe bahut firmly deal karne ki avashyakta hai theek hai i'll deal firmly without my mind being polluted pantit jaisa hai ki हमें कई बार एक्टिंग जरूर करनी पड़ती है हम गुस्सा हो रहे हैं अंदर से हम बेशक गुस्सा ना हो ऊपर से एक्टिंग तो करनी पड़ जाती है ना बिल्कुल यू गेट द थिंग्स डन अदरवाइज होता नहीं ना जो से कुछ काम होता नहीं बिल्कुल सुनील इज नॉट एंट्रेंसेस आर नॉट बिहेवियरल दे आर स्टेट्स ऑफ माइंड और दूसरी बात यह थी कि अगर हम दुनियादारी की बातें करेंगे क्या हमारा इंटरेस्ट है तो अगर हम इस विचलिसिक ग्रोथ को अपना मेन फोकस बनाते हैं तो दुनिया के इंटरेस्ट जो वर्ल्डली इंटरेस्ट है वो दे बिकम इनसिग्निफिकेंट एज वी शुड स्टॉप परसुइंग दोज वर्ल्डली इंटरेस्ट दैट्स बेटर अगर हमारा यही परसूट हाँ दिस इज नो डाउट दिस इज द मोस्ट रिलायबल एम टू बी परसूड और एस्पिरेशन टू बी परसूड बट देन कंपेयर टू दिस एम अगेन आई विल रिपीट परसूट ऑफ वर्ल्डली गोल्स इज इनसिग्निफिकेंट तो So I think we should stop doing it and become a monk. That's a separate issue. That is your choice, है ना? जो हमें सिखाया जा रहा है, सिखाया जा रहा है कि हम जीवन में जो भी करते हैं, उसको हम बिना hindrances के कर सकते हैं। अब मैं monk बनना चाहता हूँ कि नहीं, is up to me. But ऐसा नहीं सिखाया जा रहा है कि मेरा जो worldly जीवन है, वो मैं तभी जी सकता हूँ यदि मैं उसको गुस्से से कर, अपना मन में गुस्सा है मन में लोभ है मन में ग्रीड है ऐसा नहीं है सो so, जब हम उसको ऐसे फ्रेम करते हैं ना कि जी ये करना है तो तो हमें मंग बन जाना पड़ता है इट मींस वी हैव नॉट येट अंडरस्टूड द टीचिंग एक रीजनेबल इंटरेस्ट है अपना नो ग्रीड जहाँ एक सिचुएशन इन्वॉल्व करती है हमारे जहाँ रीजनेबल इंटरेस्ट बनता है तो हम उसको भी उसका भी इंटरेस्ट उसमें हम ट्रैम्पल नहीं कर रहे उसके इंटरेस्ट को हम ट्रैम्पल नहीं कर रहे अपने इंटरेस्ट की बात कर रहे हैं जो रीजनेबल है उसको भी दूसरा आदमी ट्रैम्पल कर देता है इग्नोर दिम डज इट डू आई नॉट डिजर्व दैट इज इट हैपनिंग Is that is there something wrong that's happening there? You think? Maybe deserving because हमें कम है Exactly, exactly. That, if I come to that point, that's that then the matter ends. Well, that's the starting point. It doesn't end there. That's the starting point. It doesn't end there. That's where I start from. Acha, ye karmo ke wajah se ho raha hai. Now what do I want to do? Ye hi hai na ki I should uh, stop pursuing those interests, worldly interests, which are insignificant. This is a. चलिए आप सोच लीजिए है ना. दूसरा मेरा point था कि हम लोग जाएँ over the so many years we have spent of life, we are, have a very strong tendency to seek pleasures. and now we are switching over to this spiritual path 
एंड दिस इज वेरी डिजायरेबल पाथ टू बी परसूड लेकिन जो हमारी टेंडेंसी है दैट कॉजेज अस लेजीनेस एंड बोर्डम जो टेंडेंसी हमने ओवर दर्स बिल्डअप कर लिया अपने अंदर दैट कॉजेज लेजीनेस एंड बोर्डम दिस इज माई पॉइंट दैट इज वन कॉज ओवर ईटिंग इज वन पार्ट आपने कहा तो ओवर ईटिंग तो हम नहीं करते जहां तक मेरा कोशिश है और दूसरा आपने कहा था एक और जो कारण था आपने बताया था वो भी रेलिवेंट नहीं है बट मैं समझता हूँ ये कॉन्टीन्यूटी जो है ना उसकी प्लेयर्स की टेंडेंसी की वो भी हमारे जो है लेजीनेस और बोर्डम में तब्दील हो जाती है में मुख्य उद्देश्य वही है कि अपने अनुशय क्लेश को कम करना है और वो कम किए बगैर कुछ नहीं होने वाला है दैट इज देंस ऑफ प्रैक्टिस यू टू चेंज अवर लेट एंड टेंडेंसीज यू टू कम्प्लीटली ए फुल्ली लिबरेटेड पर्सन इज इज नो अनुशय क्लेश लेफ्ट दैट इज बीन पॉइंटेड आउट सो मेनी टाइम इन दिस इन दिस इट सेल्फ वो एक्चुअली एक वर्ड लिख देते हैं भगवान कह देते हैं अनुशय है, तो हम उसको एक जगह तो सातों अनुशय डिटेल में भी बताए गए हैं अटेंशन ऑन दैट नो सो देर आर वेरियस लेटर टेंडेंसीज जब तक वो कम नहीं होंगी तब तक हम लिबरेट नहीं होने वाले हैं कुछ भी करते रहे हम तो अगर हमारा उद्देश्य लिबरेशन का है तब तो उसकी महत्व है अगर हमारा उद्देश्य कुछ उस तरह का तो फिर बात अलग है तब तो So we have to see what is our chanda. What are we seeking? Past we have been seeking. What are we doing now? So it doesn't matter. What matters is what are we doing now. So, so your thing is true. We have latent tendencies, but they are not permanent. They are not. There is nothing permanent in this world. No? So they are also changeable. The whole practice, we say that we are pleasant eye, or our mistress. राग जागा और हम उस पर एक्ट नहीं करते या राग जागने नहीं देते लाइक दैट आल्सो इन प्रैक्टिस व्हाट आर वी डूइंग वी आर नॉट अलाउिंग दैट लेटेंट टेंडेंसी ऑफ एंजॉयिंग द प्लेजेंट सेंसेशन टू टेक प्लेस हम उस लेटेंट टेंडेंसी को डिनाई कर रहे हैं अपने ब्रेन में एक नया सर्किट बना रहे हैं अगर आप साइंटिफिक बात में कहें तो वो लेटेंट टेंडेंसी धीरे धीरे खत्म हो जाती है वो भूल जाते हैं हम कि ऐसी परिस्थिति में ऐसा करना है वो सामान्य भाषा में कहें तो वो आदत हमारी छूट जाती है तो आदतों को बदलना है तो सारा साधना है साधना और क्या है साधना का मन मतलब होता है मन को साधना मतलब हमारी आदतों को बदलना जो हमारी आदतें हमको दुख देती है उनको छोड़ना जो आदतें हमारे को प्रसन्न देती है सुख देती है और निर्माण की ओर ले आती है हमें शांति देती है तृष्णाएं कम करती है संस्कारों का उपशमन करती है उस तरफ बढ़ना यही साधना है जी बिल्कुल ठीक है मैं सिर्फ ये कह रहा था कि ये जो हमारे जो आपने रीजन लिखे हैं ओवर रेटिंग एंड डिप्रेस स्टेट ऑफ माइंड इसके अलावा ये भी एक बहुत बड़ा रीजन है ऑफकोर्स द बेस्ट वे आउट इज वॉकिंग मेडिटेशन एटलीस्ट आई फील सो बैठ के नहीं होता तो फिर वॉकिंग मेडिटेशन करें हमारे डेली लाइफ में कई बार ऐसा होता है कि यू आर faced with repeatedly you are faced with a situation where someone with whom you don't want to sit or chat or do anything you know because of the personality or the or the nature or the thought process that person has uske bawajood aap usko avoid nahi kar sakte ab wahan par ek bahut zabardast ek फिनोमिना एवर्शन तो है ही बट उसको अब कैसे खत्म करें समझ में नहीं आता बहुत मुश्किल हो रहा है सबसे महत्वपूर्ण 
फंडामेंटल लॉ ऑफ कर्मा अगर हम उसको नहीं एक्सेप्ट करेंगे तो कोई सोल्यूशन नहीं फ्रेंकली हम टेलिंग वेरी फ्रेंकली अच्छा अगर हम ये नहीं मानने को तैयार कि जो मेरी जीवन की परिस्थिति है मेरे घर में मेरे परिवार में मेरे जॉब में मेरी सोसाइटी में मेरे फ्रेंड्स में ऐसे लोग हैं जो मेरे को हमेशा दुख देते हैं हाँ अगर मैं उस बात को ठीक से नहीं समझ रहा हूं तो नहीं होगा वो कभी खत्म नहीं होगा कुछ भी कर लें हम पहले एक्सेप्टेंस होनी चाहिए ये मेरे ही कर्मों का फल है ये लगता है कि वो बाहर वाला बहुत गलत काम कर रहा है बाहर वाले को ऐसा नहीं कहना चाहिए ऐसा नहीं सोचना चाहिए इस तरह के विचार नहीं करने चाहिए बिल्कुल सच बात है वो लगता बिल्कुल यही है अपरेंट कॉज वही है बट साधना के मार्ग पे आगे बढ़ने के लिए अपरेंट कॉज से छोड़ डीपर कॉज पे जाना पड़ेगा पहले वो एक्सेप्ट नहीं होगा तो नहीं होगा हम कुछ भी कर ले कितनी भी सांस को देख ले मैत्री कर ले ये कर ले वो कर ले नहीं होगा बिल्कुल नहीं होगा फिर अटक के आ जाएगी क्योंकि वो तो राउंड द क्लॉक हो रहा है खुशी हमारे राउंड द क्लॉक हमारे जीवन में ऐसी बसी हुई है तो कैसे निकलेंगे उससे हम उनको समझना पड़ेगा ये मेरे कर्मों का फल है अब मुझे इस पर काम करना है और एक बात ये भी है प्रकृति का नियम है जैसे कई बार वैसे उसको अपने पुराने टी आचार्य की कहानी से बताता था कि भाई अगर आप एक एग्जाम जीवन में दे रहे हैं और फेल हो रहे हैं तो उसको एग्जाम को दोबारा देना पड़ेगा सिंपल तो वो परिस्थिति बार बार आती ही जाएगी वो प्रकृति की करुणा है कि भाई एग्जाम फेल हो गए पास हो करो कुछ माई अर्लियर टीचर यूज टू टेल मी यू नो नॉन बुद्धिस्ट टीचर सेंट सन्यासी फेल हो गए तो दोबारा एग्जाम देना पड़ेगा वो फेल जितनी बार फेल हो गए उतनी बार देते रहो करते रहो करो ना कोशिश करो देखो तो सही उसको पास करने का तरीका क्या है एग्जाम पास करने का तरीका तुम्हें मालूम है तुम उसको करना नहीं चाहते फिर कहते हो कि ये वो आदमी मेरे को परेशान कर रहा है तो ये क्या हो सकता है उसका तो so it's very difficult no doubt about it but that's the way it is we reap the fruits of our karma and we have to go through that hell we have to go through that difficult situation and develop all our wisdom bring it into bearing sati panya jitni bhi kar sakte hain dheere 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 ho jayega lekin agar hamari no acceptance nahi hogi ki ye mere karma ka phal hai to fir bahut mushkil hai इम्पॉसिबल है वर्चुअली तो आप ये कह रहे हैं अगर मैं ये थॉट हो जाए कि मेरे कर्मों का फल है तो एवर्शन विल ग्रेजुअली गो और इट विल फिनिश एक्सेप्टेंस एक्सेप्टेंस जीवन में वो मेरे को बहुत ज्यादा दुखी कर सकती है ये बहुत उसको मैं अपने कर्मों का फल देके यू कैन प्रैक्टिस खंती खंती परम तपोति तिखा दैट इज द रियल खंती पेशेंस वो है ना कि बहुत अप्रिय परिस्थिति है जीवन में और मैं उसको शांति से शांति में बगैर बेचैन हुए सहन कर रहा हूँ देख रहा हूँ और ये समझते हुए ये मेरे कर्मों का फल है मैं खांति की पार में बढ़ा रहा हूँ इसको अनुभव करके और तितिक्षा अपनी पेशेंस बढ़ा रहा हूँ तो पेशेंस और खांति आर टू वंडरफुल क्वालिटीज सो आई एम यूजिंग दिस वेरी अनप्लेजेंट सिचुएशन टू डेवलप दीज गुड क्वालिटीज दैट इज ए फंडामेंटल थिंग यू नो अभी पिछले सुत्तों में कई बार हमने देखा है कि सुख हो दुख हो उपेक्षा हो उसके दो काइंड है एक वो जिससे होलसम क्वालिटीज बढ़ती है एक वो जिससे होलसम क्वालिटीज घटती हैं तो दुख से भी होलसम क्वालिटीज बढ़ सकती हैं अगर हम प्रज्ञा लगा के इस्तेमाल करें मेरी बहुत फंडामेंटल टीचिंग कोई इसमें कॉम्प्लेक्स है ही नहीं कि भाई हर परिस्थिति में दो तरह के एक्शन हो सकते हैं एक वो जिससे हमारी होलसम क्वालिटीज बढ़ेंगी और दूसरा वो जिससे होलसम क्वालिटीज घटेंगी अनहोलसम बढ़ेंगी 
अब हम पे निर्भर करता है हम क्या करना चाहते हैं अगर हम डिस्पैशनेटली जब हम उस परिस्थिति से थोड़ी देर बाहर आ जाए कहीं चले जाए थोड़ा विचार करें देन यू कैन रिफ्लेक्ट यार मैं मुझे क्या करना चाहिए अब ऐसी अनप्लेजेंट सिचुएशन में क्या तो मैं आई कैन कीप ऑन क्रिबिंग कीप ऑन करिंग कीप ऑन करसिंग कीप ऑन करसिंग माई सेल्फ कीप ऑन करसिंग सिचुएशन और आई कैन सी आ दिस इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट सिचुएशन इन माई लाइफ दिस इज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू गिव अप माई अवर्शन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू रिड्यूस माई टेंडेंसीज ऑफ एंगर अवर्शन लेट मी प्रैक्टिस I'll succeed sometimes, fail sometimes. Okay, never mind. That's it. It will go on like that. If I fail and I get so upset, or if I start to get a little more senior, then it will get worse, right? Then the teaching is not being fully accepted. Then that part of the teaching which tells us these mental states are not mine; they are anatta. They are arising because of conditionality. Then that part of the teaching is applicable. See, we have to see which teaching to apply at what point. जब मेरा मन नहीं हैंडल कर पा रहा है मैंने इसे ओके इट्स ऑल राइट माइंड इज स्टिल वीक इट नीड सम पेशेंस इट नीड सम रेस्ट ओके गिव इट अ रेस्ट देन फेस इट अगेन प्रवचन में हमने सुना है ना कि भाई जब एनिमी बहुत स्ट्रांग हो तो वो वॉर वॉर का फैक्शन बताया करते हैं प्रियंका जी शायद बता दिए कुछ प्रवचन में कि हम जब बहुत एनिमी बहुत स्ट्रांग होता है तो यहाँ छोटे थोड़े लोग हैं जो सामने फ्रंटली नहीं अटैक करते वो खाई खोद के बैठ जाते हैं उसमें वो निकल जाए यार उसके ऊपर से और फिर जब निकल जाएगा तो फिर तब तक तैयार कर लेते हैं फिर शुरू करेंगे सो यू हैव टू ऑल्सो ट्रीट अवर अवर माइंड एज एज एन ऑब्जेक्ट नॉट एज ए सब्जेक्ट जिस तरह से मैं आपको एडवाइस कर रहा हूँ उस तरह मुझे अपने को भी एडवाइस करना चाहिए जब मेरे पास परेशानी आ है दैट इज द थिंग मैं अपने को भी उसी तरह से डिस्पैशनेटली थर्ड पर्सन में देखूं जैसे आपको देख रहा हूं कि अब सेकंड पर्सन व्हेन यू हैव दैट एटीट्यूड नाउ दैट विल हैपन ओनली इफ हैव सम अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ नॉट मी नॉट माय सेल्फ नॉट माय आता है दोज अंडरस्टैंडिंग हेल्प अस वो आपको लगता है एब्स्ट्रैक्ट है यार क्या मैं दिस नॉट मी नॉट माई माइंड माई माई सेल्फ क्या सब फर्क पड़ता है अगर वो अंडरस्टैंडिंग अवेलेबल है तो एट अप्रोप्रिएट टाइम यूज इट इफ यूज इट इन एन अप्रोप्रिएट टाइम तो तबाही मच जाएगी तो आप कहेंगे अरे ठीक है खून कर दो क्या फर्क पड़ता है मैंने थोड़ा ना किया दैट्स अ मिस यूज ऑफ द टीचिंग सो वी हैव टू नो वेन टू अप्लाई वॉट टीचिंग एंड देन गेट आउट ऑफ ए कन्वर्ट ए डीप क्राइसिस इन टू एन अपॉर्चुनिटी इज द क्राइसिस इन लाइफ दैट हैज टू बी आई दर सफर्ड थ्रू or converted into an opportunity to whatever extent i can i will do again falter again do it again falter again do it that's it that's how sadhana goes so ye ajan cha ki jo teaching hai na bahut achhi hai is mamle mein to bhai ye sadhana ka mukhya baat hai 70% is 75% time pe yahi hoga to maloo hai main agar ye kya kar raha hai main nahi kar pa raha to koi baat nahi this is called sadhana carry on so we have to we have to learn so much things from so many teachers let us use them use them in wisdom that is very important if we misuse the teaching then we will be in trouble so ye mera number nivedan hai let's let's reflect deeply on the teachings and use them in a proper manner thank you thank you uh, jo similes de gaye hain they can be creatively visualized na you can never The main point which is being mentioned is कि भाई जब आ, हमारा कोई डेट होता है तो वी आर कॉन्स्टेंटली वरिड अबाउट इट ना अगर कोई डेट आपने देखा होगा कई लोगों के साथ जो प्रॉब्लम आ जाती है डेट लिया आप लोग बिजनेस में लगाया वो खराब हो गया बिजनेस नहीं चला तो इट बिकम लाइफ लॉन्ग ट्रेजिडी बिकॉज पीपल टू सेल देर हाउसेज टू रिपेयर द डेट and then somehow keep on requesting the money ke bhai thoda lender se request karo thoda wait kar and then i can link so you're constantly worried about that you go debt come clear hoga and exactly same is the thing with covetousness that you're constantly worried when i will get that what i want when i will get that money. and that constant uh, kind of humiliation one has to face isn't it 
internally it's a humiliation that person is knocking at your doors and now when and you're not able to do that and same sort of humiliation is felt when you have any any kind of sensual desire and it is not you're not able to drop it and it keeps on constantly making you worried about you know seeking that and then getting not getting it getting kind of uh, whatever be the reason for uh, whatever the nature of the sensual desire that will show its own uh, negativity on you अगर वो किसी व्यक्ति के प्रति है किसी वस्तु के प्रति है तो वस्तु को भी प्राप्त करने के लिए आपको एफर्ट करना पड़ता है और वो मिले ना मिले एंड देन यूर कॉन्स्टेंटली अंडर काइंड ऑफ एजिटेशन कॉन्स्टेंटली यूर एट कॉन्स्टेंटली थिंकिंग अबाउट द सेम थिंग स्ट्रॉन्ग क्रेविंग कॉन्स्टेंटली एंगेज इन दैट पर्टिकुलर ऑब्जेक्ट एंड कॉन्स्टेंटली वरीड अबाउट वेन वी लाइक गेट इट वेन वी लाइक गेट इट while when you give it up then that worry is totally gone that's how i understand it you can reflect upon it whether it makes more sense or not okay so sunil ji aapka bhi example bhi baache mein us point of view se 